A 7nm chip made by High Silicon is making waves all across China. It's not like no one's ever done this before, but the reason why this news is so exciting is that Huawei's design chip company could do this without EUV machines. Now, the question is, if Huawei was able to achieve that on its own, then can they scale them down further to 3nm? Let's find out. High Silicon's new Kirin 900 chip has been designed for smartphones by Huawei, and its main purpose is to serve as an alternative to Qualcomm's Snapdragon chips. The reason why Huawei has taken this design is to bypass the expensive Qualcomm processors to hopefully reduce production costs, and surprisingly, these new chips have been super impressive with their performance so far. While the Qualcomm chips are 4nm in design and are a year old at this point at 2023, not to mention there's an obvious technology gap with High Silicon's own chip, Huawei has been able to successfully give its competitors a run for their money. As far as design is concerned, the chips are system on the chip, which means that it's not on the CPU, but instead has multiple GPUs and NPUs, along with a modem for 5G. The best, most interesting part about all of this is its size, which is rumored to be 7nm, fabricated by China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation. In fact, the size of the chip is so unbelievable that some tech enthusiasts even call it a 5 nanometer class node. What's even more exciting about these new chips is that since the technology is good enough for mass producing them, the SMIC will now be able to manufacture thousands of millions of these chips in record time. The reason why SMIC's mass production is such good news for chip designers is because in the near future, this means that such facilities will be able to produce AI accelerators designed by local companies like Baidu and Startup Beer. As of right now, Baidu is one of the most popular search engines in the world. This is because of China's Great Firewall, restricting access to other popular platforms worldwide. Baidu has gained immense traction because of this among Chinese users and is now one of the largest internet companies in the world. Not just that, but in 2016, it also pioneered a voice-first keyword app powered by AI. So it's safe to say that these guys would definitely make good use of the AI accelerators once SMIC's mass production comes in to effect. But here's where things get a little tricky. Back in 2022, IBM came out with a 2nm process node, which might sound really impressive, but the truth was not what it seemed. The chips were just a bunch of wafers in a lab, so while it's possible to make such structures, mass producing them altogether is totally different. Now, Adding further fuel to the fire here is the whole controversy surrounding the process node names. So, SMIC positioned their N plus 2 process node as an equivalent to 7nm, which does make sense to some extent, but it's not exactly the real deal here. Be it a 7nm chip, a 5nm chip, or even a 3nm chip, like Apple's new A17 chip, these numbers don't actually represent the dimensions within the transistors. They're just mere estimates of the driving capability of a device, or in simpler terms, the performance of the device. Now, here's the thing. All this talk about transistors seems super simple at first, but somewhere along the road, it gets a little tough to grasp. For example, for a 28nm transistor, it's easy to draw up a 20nm gate and then work your way through it to fabricate it. But starting from 16nm and below, the conventional methods don't apply. For transistors below these parameters, engineers use a call called FinFET that designs gates that aren't rectangular anymore. Not only that, but these gates also have fins, hence the name, and that's why it's difficult to design those gates in the usual way. This is exactly why process nodes under 16nm are hard to explain, and they're often just for marketing purposes. Of course, that doesn't mean it's not possible to make a 7nm transistor. It is, and there are many ways to build such a technology, which is why the company does have a leeway to call their N plus 2 technology 7nm. But despite the slight differences in their pitches and transistor densities, it's still a comparable piece of technology commercially. Now, TSMC has been making 7nm chips for a really long time now. In 2017, they successfully kickstarted their production, and by 2020, they had already fabricated over a billion of these chips. The reason why the company could yield so many of them was because of the EUV machines they had. But since SMIC reportedly had no access to such technology, their 7nm chips are a little different from TSMC's. With the help of immersion deep ultraviolet machines called DUV machines from ASML, Huawei's chip company could bypass the conventional production process of fabricating 7nm chips and come up with their own tech that works just as well as the one on the market. In fact, not having access to EUV machines turned out to be a better bargain for them. Rumor has it that they've already placed an order 
order for 50 DUV machines to meet potential production demands in the future, and that's definitely something worth getting excited over. The main difference between EUV machines and DUV machines lies in the wafer patterning. Both types of machines use different wavelengths of light. DUV machines use a wavelength of around 193 nm, while EUV machines can easily go all the way down to 13.5 nm. Now, According to Physics 101, a shorter wavelength is a lot better to have a larger resolution. Such wavelengths can fabricate extremely fine structures on the wafer, so it's understandable why a shorter wavelength is absolutely beneficial for 7nm chips. When you compare these numbers to DUV machines, since they're low resolution, they've only ever been used in the industry to manufacture 14nm chips, which brings us to the most important question that concerns this entire breakthrough the most. Can SMIC even produce 7nm chips using DUV machines when they have limited resolution? The simple answer to that is yes. Yes, they can. But like all great things, this one comes with a great backstory too. In case you didn't know, there was once a time in New Zealand where they didn't really have a space industry until a company called Rocket Lab shifted things around a little. With no big pocket investors or any access to advanced technology, people at Rocket Labs got creative and started 3D printing rockets instead of waiting for billions of dollars of investments to pour in. The reason why this is a valid example here is because Rocket Labs was in the same boat as SMIC. Neither had access to the latest tech, so both of them had to look for an affordable way to go about it. For SMIC though, the best option they had was to take some help from some buddies over at TSMC and hire them to figure out how to fabricate 7nm chips without the need for an EUV machine. Of course, that's not to say that making 7nm chips without those machines is an easy task. Because before EUV machines could fabricate fine wafers, DUV machines were all the rage in the industry. They were considered to be state of the art. Until the industry reached a point of fabricating 20nm transistor chips and needed a way to continue Moore's law. Companies like Intel and TSMC pushed the DUV machines to their limits in order to manufacture 20nm chips and created a technique called multi-patterning, which involved the use of several masks and exposing the wafer a couple of times to make out a pattern with a single transistor feature. While this was a lot of work for the companies who tried to make this happen, eventually they were able to scale things down all the way from 20nm to 7nm, even if it was an error-prone method. Since it was super hard to get a perfect alignment between the patterns and the steps, the misalignment resulted in a lot of defects, which ultimately also cost engineers a lot of money. Now, as far as SMIC's recent efforts are concerned, they're currently fabricating 7nm chips through a 5-6 to six stage process of multi-patterning, where they keep exposing the wafer 5-6 to six times to draw a single transistor feature. Not only is that extremely time-consuming, but it's not exactly cost-effective either. While it's true that DUV machines can make 7nm chips happen, with the help of EU UV machines, the total cost of the fabrication process would be 30% less overall. Now, if we skip the costs for a second and even take time out of the equation, let's see whether SMIC can achieve a smaller process node, like 4 nanometers or even 3 nanometers with this technology. As far as multi patterning is concerned, not only have companies fabricated chips using that before, but despite its flaws, it's been a reliable method too. However, the defect rate would be too high, and it's just too much of a calculated risk to take. Even now, with EUV machines, there's still a defect rate affecting a third of the wafers, which is why there's a dire need for high NA EUV machines, a step up from its predecessor. For China, knowing how hands-on they are with tech and innovation, it's only a matter of time before they adopt novel techniques and invest in lithography machines to stimulate the Chinese industry. After all, it's all about long-term planning for them, and since their focus is to build self-sufficiency in semiconductor space, then taking a chance on futuristic technology is their safest bet. If you like this video, please support the channel by dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this.